Uh, hi again, everybody. Um, we turn to Tom Kuhlman now. Um, very excited to hear your Living Histories talk. Please tell us about Living Many Histories. All right. So uh, first of all, thanks to Shri for the invitation to uh, come and do this for you all. I hope it's not I hope it's, you know, relatively interesting. So uh, I was born and grew up in uh, southern Indiana in Evansville, Indiana, uh, which is right on the Ohio River, uh, except so the city itself is maybe on the order of like 100,000 people. So, you know, it's a, it's a relatively good sized city. Uh, but to say that I grew up in the city is a bit of an exaggeration. So I, I'm really more uh, out in, in this area over here, which is essentially the middle of nowhere. <laughs> and so where I grew up was uh, incredibly rural and very isolated. So for example, this image up here at the top is the picture of my front yard when I grew up as a kid. And when you go beyond these trees uh, down here is the view that you would see. So I, you know, I grew up literally in the, in the middle of a cornfield in rural Indiana. Uh, so, um, so as I grew up, my childhood was pretty much, you know, the stereotypical country boy where I just run around and, you know, poke things with a stick to see what happens. And essentially, I feel like I'm more or less still doing the same thing. It's just the sticks that I'm using have gotten fancier and more expensive, but uh, essentially the approach is still nearly identical. <laughs> okay, so um, as a kid, I, I really, you know, Growing up in the middle of rural Indiana, I didn't know anything about academic science or anything like that. You know, I just knew that I found it interesting. And so I didn't really have too much, you know, vision or idea of where I was going. And so uh, when it came time to go to college, I just went to, I went to Ball State University, which is up north a little bit in Muncie, Indiana. And I uh, majored in uh, genetics and cell biology just because it seemed like a potentially interesting thing to me. And so I tried doing that for a few years. And uh, in the summer of my sophomore year, for whatever reason, I wound up going to the library and I checked out this little book right here, which now my camera won't focus on. So it's Albert Einstein's book on special and general relativity. And it just completely blew my mind. So the first thing that I found amazing about it was that I actually understood it, right? So I'd always heard about, you know, Albert Einstein is this ridiculous genius. And then I read this book and, you know, holy cow, I, I understand what he's talking about. And so from that point on, I just fell in love with physics and decided to pick up a physics major. And in particular, in one of my E&M classes, my professor was uh, Ruth Howes, which you see here. And I, for, you know, she seemed to be relatively impressed with me. And one of these moments of serendipity was she told me uh, she was on a trip to a conference somewhere and ran into Professor Henry Abarbanel from UC San Diego. And they start, for whatever reason, in the middle of this airport, wherever they were, they started talking about me, right? And so uh, I wound up going to Henry's lab for a summer to do a research experience for undergraduates at San Diego. And I think he's probably the primary reason that I wound up going to uh, UCSD for graduate school. So this preparing for this talk was a real blast from the past because I, I Googled all these people and I found this image. So these were the guys that I worked with back in 1998, 1999 at UC San Diego. And it was uh, amazing that I found this image of these people that, from so long ago. <laughs> so I wound up going to uh, UC San Diego. And at this point, I decided I wanted to be you know, a physicist, right? I wanted to be a string theorist. And so I went and started studying string theory. And I quickly learned that I was not cut out to be a string theorist, right? So this kind of, it, I got the impression that uh, to be successful at things like string theory and theory in general, it has to really come naturally to you. And it did not come naturally to me. And so I quickly started looking for other opportunities. And the fact that I had this background in biology led me to start looking into uh, people at UCSD that did biological physics. 
And I wound up getting hooked up with uh, this gentleman here, Terry Hua, who at the time uh, was just, so he was, you know, started out as a theorist. And at some point he decided he didn't want to wait around for experiment, experimentalists to do experiments for him. And so he started his own lab. And I just happened to join his group at the same time that he was starting his lab up. And uh, so I think I, I was his first graduate student in his experimental lab and where we started working on uh, quantifying gene expression and gene regulation and, and these kinds of things. And this is also where I first got hooked up with Rob Phillips, who I'm also extremely grateful to for all of his, uh, you know, friendship and guidance over the years. And he's been extremely supportive and, and helpful to me. And I just wanted to take the opportunity to say thanks to Rob. Okay. Oh, this is also where I met my lovely wife. Uh, and so her origins in Southern California will become uh, extremely important shortly. All right, so from UC San Diego, after I got my PhD, I moved to Princeton and did my postdoc with Ted Cox here in the Department of Molecular Biology. And so here I took the opportunity to get a little bit more hardcore into, you know, like biology and molecular biology and started working on things like genome editing techniques and, and things like this and microscopy, fluorescent microscopy. And uh, Ted was just an outstanding mentor and uh, extremely friendly guy. And uh, these were, again, some of the happiest years of my life working at Princeton was, it was just a pleasure in every possible sense of the word. And after I got finished at Princeton, I uh, started at a junior faculty position at the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign in the Department of Physics. And here I met my good friend, Nigel Goldenfeld, with whom we started working on things having to do with, you know, like uh, uh, origins of mutations and measuring the effects of mutations on evolutionary dynamics and things like this. And uh, so with him and all the other biophysicists at Illinois, we had a great time and extremely productive uh, 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 collaborations. Uh, but there was an issue, and the issue is that this beautiful picture of, of Illinois is not, is not what Illinois looks like for a lot of the year. A lot of the time it looks like this. <laughs> and my poor wife, who had spent her entire life in Southern California, just could not, could not take it. She, 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 uh, we, we had to move back to Southern California, essentially. And so in 2018, uh, you know, to, to, to keep everybody happy, I had to uh, move to Southern California and uh, wound up in this lovely place, UC Riverside in the Department of Physics and Astronomy, where I think currently I'm actually the only experimental biophysicist, uh, but it's a lovely place and I'm having a great time. And uh, now I'm here before you lovely people telling you all this, this story. And so I thought I'd wrap up just by saying thank you to all the people who, you know, helped me out with their support and friendship and guidance over the years, like my family and all of my collaborators and mentors from, from Ball State all the way to, to where I am now. And the problem, the problem with doing this, of course, is that inevitably I forget people, which makes me seem like a jerk. So if I've forgotten anyone, I or didn't have you know, the space to put them on here. I, I apologize, but uh, I, I just wanted to end by thanking these people who have helped me out tremendously over the years. And I think with that, I'm done, so. Thank you so much, Tom. On behalf of the audience, I'm clapping and um, inviting questions. If you have a question audience, please just unmute and go for it. I have um, one question, uh, if I can ask. Please. Yeah, so um, it's kind of interesting because I'm uh, like uh, people who, are, who come into biophysics, um, they are either interested in physics and come into biology. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's very rare that you find people who had um, like real education in biology and then come to physics, but also like the kind of thinking, for example, I was talking to a friend of mine and we were discussing that like, oh, uh, biologists think in qualitative way, 
but physicists are more quantitative they want pred- predictable theories and there is a dilemma like where do you where do you lie in that spectrum and uh, my question is that do you lie in the spectrum or is there any <laughs> is there any spectrum for you right well so i think you're absolutely correct i i think my background is fairly unusual and again i think it was a source of you know when i was younger i didn't really know what i wanted to do and so i just started doing something and started got my background in biology first uh but you're completely correct that the way of thinking is totally different uh but i also think this unusual background is one of the things that has you know helped me out over the years so for example when i tried to join terry's lab you know he was thrilled to have me because you know i was a bi- i was a physicist i was a physics student who knew how to do biology experiments and he was starting up a biology lab and uh you know there's not a lot of people like that out there so i think that unusual background was a benefit to me at various times uh you know it can be a detriment too like sometimes i i'm worried that i'm a bit too biological for my for my physicist compatriots but you know uh, you 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 do what you're good at right so so that's i just do what i think is fun so thank uh, you thank thank you so much uh tom do you want to ask your question me sorry sorry tom sorry did i say tom tim tim would <laughs> yes, you like to ask you question? Thanks Thomas. Um I was at U of I 25 years before you. Mhm. Physics department as a graduate student with Enrico Gatton. And uh so he wasn't there obviously and I just wanted to ask you um I sometimes feel I'm a physician actually. Mhm. My background's in physics, biophysics, solid state physics, uh all self-funded since I left graduate school working as a physician. Mm-hmm. where do you feel you said a little bit i think i uh commiserate a little bit feeling out of uh it's hard to find a niche when your feet are in different places and your brain is in another place i think so where do you think you feel most comfortable for yourself and where do you find the most comfort in terms of the niche that you can fit in yeah so uh I honest well so <laughs> maybe I'm going to get myself in trouble saying these things that are going to be Well, I'm sorry for a leading question. <laughs> sorry. But so I, mean, I I got myself in more trouble than you could ever have. There. So <laughs> it's man. it's all been done. Yeah, so I I feel like, you know, the biological side of questions come more naturally to me and like is the more natural way for me to think in. uh so generally what happens is that you know i come up with some interesting biological problem to work on and then go start talking to theorists and try to come up with models of how to apply physics to it so i i again i'm in the department of physics and astronomy so whether or not this is a smart thing to say or not but i feel like i'm mostly just a biologist who isn't afraid to do a little math so uh yeah that's that's kind of what i feel Uh, my my congratulations my my applause it's really uh <laughs> it's really something well thanks uh thank you tim tom again on behalf of the audience thank you super much um on this uh note i'm closing the recording